What's going on, people? Welcome to another episode of the Natty News Daily Podcast. We've got a very special guest. I'm sure a lot of you are going to recognize the man's face, Mr. David DeMisquita. Hopefully I didn't butcher that last name too bad, but most of you probably know him as Dynamite D on Instagram. Welcome to the podcast, my man. Appreciate you coming on. No, I appreciate you guys getting me on the podcast and uh, definitely the post that sparked the interest of uh, the invite. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I've got the post pulled up here, so I'm just going to read it out so uh, people kind of get some insight as to what we're going to talk about today. Um, so caption is warning. I'm only saying this one time. If you're an enhanced athlete or previously enhanced athlete and take an IFBB pro card away from someone who is actually natural, you'll end up on my page. The NPC is trying to give an outlet for natural athletes. Don't ruin this for everyone out there. Play stupid games and win stupid prizes. I'm going to give you the floor. What triggered that? Yeah, so there is an enhanced athlete or previously enhanced athlete within the last two to three years. That's very obvious. And they decided to compete in a natural show. They actually didn't win their pro card. Nice. So uh, I didn't have to make a post about it because they didn't take away an IP pro card for someone that deserved it. And, you know, unfortunately, there were some like suspect athletes from a a certain coach that was putting multiple of them on stage. Now I was just like waiting to pull the plug on it. I'm surprised they actually showed up after that post was done because it's as clear as daylight when usually someone is enhancing. I will say there are certain genetic anomalies out there and it's almost impossible to tell. Like Kai Green had feathering in his legs at like 16 years old. Like you just don't really see that. That's an anomaly that happens once in a blue moon, but that's like a one in a billion shot that you have it. And I'm not going to take anyone away and say that you're not an anomaly or you don't have superior genetics. Most people can't even relate to superior genetics. And that's why amazing natural athletes get accused of being pants all the time. And they're not. They're just amazing athletes. And if they ever decided to take the jump, right, and it's very apparent when they do it and they put on like 20, 30 pounds of like muscle tissue, it's like, oh, well, they were natural the whole time and we've been accusing them. And yeah. so. Yeah, you look at Ronnie Coleman natural. I've seen pictures of Keon Pearson natural it's like ridiculous and I coached Keon for years so and I was helping him when he was so natural and I helped him take the jump actually so it was he was on less than women when he started to enhance by the way way less so crazy um, and put on 20 pounds by the way oh for sure yeah yeah him him natural and you know, other top athletes, like when you look back, I mean, look at like Sean Clarita before he went enhanced, like, you know, he was winning natural world titles at like 130, 140 pounds just because he was that damn good, right? Yeah, Sean is actually one of the best bodybuilders in the world, in my opinion. Like he is hands down, like potentially the best bodybuilder in the world right now, as far as just an athlete goes, right? Like the dude can... I hate to use the word suffering when it comes to competing, but like there's a level of like dig and drive that like you just have to be wired differently and you're really born with it or without it. And that dude can just get bone peeled. And there's very few athletes in the world ever that have ever been able to get peeled like that. And it's psychological, man. It's, there's nothing physical about it. Like you have to just physical pain is one thing, but like the psychological factors that come into play and being calm with like your feet hurt, your butt hurts. You're going to rest on your arm and you feel like you're on your elbow and like you feel nerve pain. Like that stuff's not comfortable and like you just have to be wired differently. Yeah. So. Yeah. So let, let's kind of dive into like the the issue, I guess, at hand of, of people trying to cheat, trying to skirt through the system. How, how do we prevent that? What do we do about it? Because, you know, just like you said in that post, the NPC is trying to create this platform, which historically they've been very much more on the enhanced side of the sport here in Canada are cpa the equivalent of the npc we've had the natural stream for years and it's it's massive but we still see that right we still see people trying to skirt through the system i'm pretty sure you've had clients in our pro qualifier so you see it right so you know as as someone like yourself who's who's in this industry head first on kind of the other side of the sport as well like what do you what do you see what are your thoughts on it all yeah, I actually had a lifetime natural athlete in the re uh, recent show, and he was first place in two different divisions, and then I think he was, like, second place uh, in the open division, too, and he's, like, 50 years old. Amazing, that athlete. Mm -hmm. And he apologized to me when he didn't walk away with the pro card. I'm like, bro, you're you're amazing. Like, yeah. like what are you talking about? And he's healed. Yeah. Um, 
so you know the 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 really unfortunate thing that I have with it is that a lot of these really good natural athletes would be the best enhanced athletes too because they're wired as amazing athletes. And it's really unfortunate when someone is enhancing and just competing as natural athletes. Like, what are you, the best cheater on the stage that day against no one else that was cheating maybe that day? Yeah. Like, to me, that's stupid. When I was natural and competing, I was competing as enhanced athletes. I didn't care. Natural athletes usually just don't care. They just want to compete against the best. And if that's the jump and that's the IBBD Pro League, which back then it was, there was no natural outlet in the U.S. when I started. Um, you just competed and you didn't care who stepped on stage. You're not going to make an excuse to why you got second place. You're like, oh, I got second place. Like, if I want to make the jump, I can make the jump. Now, how to prevent it's very, very difficult for me to say because what I'm going to say next kind of sucks. And this is just the truth behind it. If you look at the Olympics, which are going on right now, mm -hmm. every single athlete is on PEDs. I don't care what anyone tells me. Every single athlete is on PEDs if your country has the money to make sure that they're passing the test. End of story. Politics do play a role. I'm sorry. Uh, money plays a role. Money and might as well be politics. So how do you test? Well, the only way that you can technically test is if you run over to someone's house in the off season, you knock on the door at midnight, piss in a cup right now, go. And by the way, do it right in front of you, drop trowel, because you can have pee bottles in, in your house that were clean. Um, there's different masking agents to mask it. And not every test is equal. Shoot, I mean, you can technically be a woman with PCOS and pop a test for coming back too high on testosterone. I've seen natural women with PCOS at 200 nanogram plus per deciliter of testosterone in their system. They're gonna pop a positive test. Does it mean they're in their hands? No. Um, is it a genetic advantage? Actually, yes, if you truly have PCOS. And then there's also like studies that show that these Olympic athletes that are women, they predominantly produce more hormones in their ovaries which is an athletic advantage when you're in high stress situations and you produce more hormones. So they get so positive on tests. So there's no perfect answer for how to do it. The only thing that you can do is knock on someone's door randomly, make them drop trial and pee in a cup right there. And that's the only way I even reasonably see it work because lie detectors, while they're great, and I think that most people probably can't pass a lie detector, you can very much pass a lie detector test if you can keep it calm. If someone's a pathological liar and they're lying about taking steroids all the time, well, guess what's going to happen? It's probably going to be pretty common to get asked a question about steroids and say, yeah, I'm not taking steroids. Sorry. Like, and in the past, they, it's a false negative, you know? So uh, no real good solution. I think that cracking down on it and making sure that you're actually testing people, I think that's the biggest thing. Making sure you're actually testing people is the first step to going in the right direction. Make everyone pee in a cup that's in that top three, not top one, top three. Why not? I mean, it costs the division money, but you know what? It costs the division more money, not people showing up because you're not testing people and they don't want to compete against enhanced athletes. And that's just the God's honest truth behind it. Do the right thing for the athlete and athletes show up. And guess what? When athletes show up, their family shows up too and they buy tickets. It's business. Yeah, that's a, that's a big gripe locally anyways is, you know, people paying $50, like every athlete pays $50 for a drug testing fee when you register and what five overall winners get tested. And, you know, we never know, do those tests actually happen? Do they go anywhere? There's no lab reports delivered after. So, you know, you, you're, you don't know for sure whether those tests are outside of like pee in this cup, like where's that cup going after that? Like athletes don't know. Um, so, you know, if you have 150 athletes paying 50 bucks and the tests being five, six, seven at most, you know, people are getting frustrated with, with wondering where that money's going. And like you said, logistically, you might not be able to test outside the top three, but if you're testing the top three in every class, you're getting at least a good portion of the show, which I think most people would be like, Hey, still better than what it's currently being done. And I would be okay with them doing these. They're going to collect their money at the end of the day if these people are showing up, right? They're $50. Why not just do it at a regional level when they're getting ready to move on to a national level where it's like, look, like, I hate to say this, but discrimination based off of looks in this situation is perfectly okay. Like, like looking at someone and thinking that someone's enhanced, just freaking test them. Like, it's not rocket science. You guys are getting paid to test them anyways. Put pocketing the money, run the test, 
you don't have to announce it publicly. You don't want the person bullied or booed off stage or anything like that. Just tell them that don't show up again. You show up, here's a three year ban, or don't ban them and tell them not to show up. Get their, go show up to the enhanced league in two weeks. There's another show, whatever, you know? Yeah. And tell them to do the right thing, you know? Hopefully their moral values are good enough to where they actually show up for the show they're supposed to be competing at so they, they can get smoked there instead. Yeah. Yeah. The thing too with the polygraph is like a lot of people, kind of scoff at its legitimacy and stuff but i think like it's a massive deterrent right like if you're someone who's who knows that you're gonna do this show you might get drug tested you might not you probably won't your your chances of getting in trouble is very low whereas like if you know that at this show i've got to pass a polygraph and potentially pass a urine test you're probably going to turn and run like you said outside of like those potential like pathological liars and shit but like i think most you know shitheads that are trying to cheat if they know they're going to get tested at least once they're probably going to be like eh, i don't know you're absolutely right i mean i could tell a formula right now to basically like take that test pretty easily but uh, i'm not going to because then people are going to be like, oh yeah like like that last thing i want to do is see enhanced athletes compete against natural athletes end of story like they're, they're giving you a sandbox to play in right now like let the natural people have their natural league. Let the enhanced athletes have their natural league. I wish that there was a good outlet like this in the U.S. back in the day. There is now. Like, they're literally building it up. And I think what's going to happen is they're eventually going to have a natural Olympia, potentially. It might be a smaller subsection of the Olympia. Well, it won't be the Olympia because it's it, there's it technically the Olympia's own, right, the title. But there will be some type of worlds, I think, for the IFBB Pro League eventually. With how quickly it's growing – and the popularity and they're amazing natural athletes especially in the u.s and they finally have their outlet i mean i just I commented on a post I, it was about ben weeders last year the guy that won the men's physique overall crazy genetics like looked amazing and i was like look i comment on the post i'm like this is like top tier genetics this guy looks amazing for those of you that don't think this is possible to reach you guys are absolutely wrong this guy is most definitely probably natural and you know, if you guys don't understand superior genetics, then you guys just don't get it. And you know what? Who has superior genetics? It's like a 0.1% chance that you got it. So um, I've been blessed to be able to work with some. So it's awesome to see. And, you know, I hate that people are like getting like ripped down for being natural athletes and being amazing. I want to see a world. I want to see the best natural athletes in the world against each other. But I also want to see how high a human can jump. So I want the enhanced Olympics, by the way, are becoming a thing. And that's what I'm telling you. I want to see how high a human can jump. I'm sorry. Like, like let them enhance. Like, like, all right, they're retired from competing in the Olympics. Rip it. You know, and we all want to see it. I'm sorry. But like, we all kind of want to see it. But we also want the, the natural Olympics too. Like, let them, you can segment it out. It's obviously privately funded by some big venture capitalists. And it's going to be cool to see. But it's okay that there's there's different avenues to go down. I think that everyone should have the ability um, they actually did a poll at the Olympics one year. If you could take a drug that guaranteed you that you were first place and you would die in, within four years, would you do it? I think it was over 90% people said yes. Anything for glory, right? Hey, I mean, <laughs> um, I, I live my life, so. So you mentioned like the, the natural Olympia and natural world championships. And obviously – you know, I don't know how queued up you are with like other natural organizations, but they have their their big world championships and their big shows and stuff like that. Um, you know, it sounds like the NPC is going to try to make the Ben Weeders that that version. And I know here in Canada, we're supposed to have like a natural pro show after nationals, which is pretty cool. So it sounds like they're they're trying to get that tiered system built right where you know you have your qualifier you go to the, the the pro qualifier then you go to the pro show and then you try to go to the ben weeders but it's it's going to be interesting like how how we filter people out right what do you think of a three-year drug-free policy because i'm pretty sure that's what it is yeah i don't believe in it um the reason why i don't believe in it is because i was a natural athlete i'm an i was an enhanced athlete and i've been on trt now for two and a half three years you know, I'm telling you right now, I can just eat some food and train a little bit harder and I can get as big as I was when I was basically enhancing. I'll be, I won't be as inflamed, but I'll be almost as big. Now I'm obviously on tier two. If I completely came off, would that this answer be the same? I don't, I mean, I was, went from 135 pounds to 220 naturally. 
And in three years, like I grew very quickly. And for me to like get back, I'm smaller than 220 right now. I could easily grow. And the thing is the amount of density in the tissue that I grew. And there are studies that are coming out that if you, and we already knew this from a actually biological standpoint and a pharmacokinetic standpoint, when you enhance, you stay enhanced. Like if you're taking anabolic steroids, your muscle fibers change permanently. And then you create new muscle tissue. So if you go and you enhance and you push yourself past your genetic limitation, but whatever your cap up point was, if it was 220 pounds and now, you, and you grow and you're 240 pounds, same body fat percentage, right? So same, uh, same lean body mass. And then you stop enhancing. Well, you've already pushed past your genetic limitation. You're probably 230 to 234 pounds without enhancement in your system. There's a 0% chance that you're not better than you ever were like when you were naturals. And you also have the psychological drive. I was always actually stronger off of um, gear than on TRT actually, which is super weird. Most people say the opposite. For some reason for me, I was always stronger. So I never really had a drop off in muscle tissue growth. The only thing that I had a drop off of this cells got smaller. But the, as far as the amount of muscle tissue that I had, that didn't ever go anywhere. If you're actually taking the time to build dense tissue, pants for like 10 years or five even five years and you push past that threshold which if unless if you're bad you're not you're going to push past that threshold like, it's not like and i will say that there's not amazing bodybuilders nowadays a lot of people are doing it for the social media but you're you will never be the same that you were when you were natural end of story i will never compete in the natural league ever i don't care if i come off trt i can compete at 40 years old and i'm 32 years old and i don't think it's fair yeah yeah, and I, and the the community tends to agree with that. You know, I always find it interesting. Like I put polls up on our Natty News page and stuff, and being like, "Yo, what's your what's your definition of natural?" Because I think this is always an interesting subject because it clashes what the people say and what the organizations say. It's so different, right? So you know, for example, I'll say like, "Okay, is it lifetime natural? Is it ten years drug free? Is it five years drug free?" Or is it natural on the day, which unfortunately seems to be what a lot of them test for is that like, as long as you're clean on the day, you're good. And the overwhelming response is lifetime natural. So you have like such a large group of athletes, the majority stepping on stage, looking at people beside them being like, okay, these guys are all lifetime natural like I am. But we know that at those high level shows, that's not the case. Really good at athletes want to push the limitations, right? That's just it. It's like I I remember when I was natural, and this for years. I actually didn't even know that like anabolics were really being used by every like guy that was on a fitness magazine at one point in time. I really didn't. I assumed that I was stupid and ignorant, and I didn't care because I loved lifting and I loved eating. So when I kind of found that out, it's like, oh yeah, every guy that you're looking up to is on trend, by the way. That's actually how I found out like about steroids, is that's what the line that was dropped to me. I'm like, oh, okay. And then sure enough, like it was a pretty accurate statement. Every athlete wants to push their limitation. So anabolic steroids, I think, should automatically disqualify you for life in bodybuilding in particular, okay? When it comes to other compounds and other drugs, I am more indifferent of three years. Like three years, I can say, okay, if it's a short time performance enhancer, say, bronchial dilator, right? And it's increasing your aerobic capacity so you can do more cardio or run further. During that period of time, you're enhanced as far as I'm concerned. That's a performance enhancing drug. When you come off that drug, does it still continue to have an impact later on? Probably for a shorter period of time, right? But that your lung capacity is probably going to reduce back down to a certain extent. Anabolic steroids are very different where they do have a permanent impact on the amount of muscle tissue that you accrued. And the issue is also mild muscle memory, it, you can get it right back. I mean, we have studies that show seven years, at least seven years. We know minimum seven years, maybe 10 years, maybe longer of like just atrophying all your muscle, going back to the gym and starting to train and being able to obtain all that muscle again. So anabolic just push you past your genetics potential and it changes your genetics forever. Like it changes that cell. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting to like hear that. And obviously it's nice to see the research come out. Cause I think that's always the scapegoat that people have is like, Oh no, I've been off for like five years. I'm, I'm natural now, or I've been off for whatever. Right. Like there's a guy that I know won a pro card here in Canada a couple of years ago, 
and uh, you know, I saw I saw it on his Instagram story. He had like a Q and A up, and people were like, "How do you feel about you know openly acknowledging taking PEDs just a couple of years ago, and here you are winning a natural pro card?" And you know, his response was just kind of like, "Hey, like I'm natural now. I haven't taken stuff in a couple of years. Like it doesn't really matter." And it's like, dude. A, now we know the science that it does matter and it matters a lot, but also the the natural athletes you're competing against are are all going to look at you and be like, man, <laughs> piss off. Yeah, I just think it's a terrible way to kick off a career too. So that's why I was like welcoming you. I'm like, please step on stage and dance. I will give you an awesome kick to your career. Yeah. Like, and it's going to be a big flop. I promise you. Like, that's my big thing. It's like, look, a lot of these people also want to make a career in the sport too. And I'm all for promoting good behavior, right? Like my page is really positive for the most part. That's why, like, when I said something like that, people were like, oh shit, like what's going on? And it's like, look, I don't care if it's any one person. What I care is that people can be fair right? Like it's treat others as you like to be treated. If you showed up to kindergarten class and like everyone had a, a pad to doodle on and then you showed up to class with like some iPad, right? You know, and like you got your work done because you had like an AI tool building everything out for you. It's like, is that, is that fair? Like, is, <laughs> yeah. is, that, is that even fun? To me, that wouldn't be fun. Like I would want to work for whatever it was, right? Like I'd want to build out like that engineering or whatever it is well, I mean, in kindergarten you're not doing that but um like whatever it is I don't, I'd want to work for it and I'd want to honestly work for it and if I'm doing something wrong it's kind of like on social media everyone like looks at likes comments stuff like that if you're not producing good content people are probably not going to engage on it so just get better show up that's what life's about is showing up better every single day but when you have to cheat to get better at something. And I don't consider taking anabolic steroids or any PEDs cheating unless if you're competing against people that are not taking it. Like that's the only way, like. I think within the rules, you know, yeah. there's rules within each organization, within each, yeah. Well, and it's funny because like the saying is like rules are meant, uh, rules are meant to be broken, laws are not. I mean, technically you're breaking the law. What do you what do you think of the kind of the culture right now of like glamorizing and, and openly talking about PD use, especially with like the younger crowd? You know what I mean? Like oh. your your trend twins and I, I can't name any more outside of those two, but there's a lot of a lot of people on, on social media and YouTube and stuff that are just openly being like, This is what I take, this is how much I take. They're like, don't do it, but like they'll openly talk about it. Like I feel like that's not good. <laughs> I, I agree with this. It's actually a massive issue that we're facing. The only reason why I even talk about PD still, by the way, is because of stuff like that. I actually stopped talking about PDs and only talked about basically like lab work, how to be healthy, medical and functional health. Like I was sick. This is probably what it is. You got a good shot of it being just run a test and see. Test, don't guess. And I went back into posting about PEDs because of the stupid stuff that I was seeing and the stupid stuff that I was seeing getting pushed. Trend is, trend is not a fun drug. I'm sorry. Like, it's not. Like, it can ruin your... I've seen it ruin more lives than anything else. Like, forever. Like, it's like, you want to, you want to like, have a hard reset button in the middle of life, take a bunch of trend for a long period of time, like, lo lose your relationship around you. Like, I've seen people being attracted to the other genders that were straight. Like, or the same genders that were straight. And like all of a sudden, like they're attracted to other gender because of the amount of copious amount of trend that they're taking. Like I, I see crazy stuff. Like you can see crazy stories online. And you know, it's being glorified. The issue is glorifying it. And these aren't professional athletes. I want to see again the best athletes in the world. I don't care if they take drugs, compete at the highest levels, right? You're the best. You're being monitored by doctors. It's healthy to well, it's not healthy. It, it, it age, but like at least they're being monitored properly. They're, the money is there. Young kids don't have the money to monitor themselves properly, and it's being glorified to inject yourself with something. It's not glorifying, I can promise you. I remember my second shot ever, and I was like, oh my gosh, like there's a, <laughs> this kind of, there's a needle on my ass, This and I'm getting stronger because there's a needle on my ass. This is how Barry Bonds hit like extra home runs. That's crazy. And sure enough, it was like, 
nothing was like that first cycle ever again. I never thought like that. It was just a random thought in my head. On my second shot, I was like, this is the weirdest thing ever. Like I'm putting oil in my body and I'm getting stronger. It's a very slippery slope. And I see people go to extremes way too often. We're already in a sport where most people are emotionally injured and damaged and they fall into it to mask as a masking agent to numb out whatever issue that they're having in their personal life or whatever trauma that they had. And most of these people like lean into the steroids to push themselves further and they never take the step to actually heal. So they go down this deep, dark rabbit hole and they lose sight of what reality actually is because it does affect your mind. It affects your mind more than people think. Until you're on steroids and off steroids, you actually don't realize. Um, like it's as much as I want to enhance again, I, I may do it and I'll, I'll be very open about it and I'll probably put online what I do if I do it, right? Behind closed curtains and I'm gonna have lab, lab work and the proper way to make sure that you monitor your health because that's the right way to educate people. Glorifying it is not. And the physiological difference, I'm probably gonna monitor my actual mental health more than anything else, which is what no one talks about because the, from a psych, psychological standpoint, I've never taken anything that is like anabolics. And it can almost be scary to talk about. And people are, is when I talk about it, they're like, hey, quit trying to scare people from taking them, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't think you guys realize, like you're probably on steroids right now. You're probably, be, you're not being a keyboard warrior. This is probably truly what you believe because you haven't taken a break from taking steroids for how many years now? And now that I've taken a break, I know the psychological difference, the drive factor. You literally metabolize adrenaline differently. So it affects your mood. That's why you see women that start taking anabolic steroids. They start acting or not acting more like men. That's a really bad way to phrase it, but they metabolize adrenaline faster like a male. And that's the reason why they may seek um, sex more frequently. Not only is it an androgen, but they may see, like literally that dopamine, they're seeking dopamine and they might getting dopamine from sex or they might drive their car faster or more aggressively. Like it changes the habits of it on a day in the life. So I hate it. Like with beyond belief, I don't want to talk about PEDs anymore. As much as I love PEDs, like I want to do an education format. I don't want to really talk about like these crazy ass cycles that people are putting online. Like I know it's clickbait. It's going to be on my page and I do it because I'm like, Hey, like this is really stupid. Like this, like it's laughable what you're taking right now. Like you can't utilize that much. And then these other people are just like talking about like, yeah, I'm taking DECA or, or they're lying about what they're taking. So they're also lying about how much they're taking. And that's another issue. I've always been very open about my use because I want people to know what, what I liked and what I didn't like. I'm very honest about that. I think that's important. And a lot of these people are like, oh yeah, I take one quarter of what I'm actually taking um, and I'm getting these results. And then these kids are like shutting down their testicles, permanently affecting themselves. Some of them may never ever be able to be fertile again because the odds are like a one in 10 chance potentially of it uh, from a statistical standpoint. Or they're taking it when they're in their teens because it's so readily available nowadays. They're, they're closing up their bones so they can't even grow to their max capacity. The brain on a male doesn't really develop until usually around the age of 24. It could be a little bit sooner. And people are just normalizing it, unfortunately. Bodybuilders have enough problems under normal circumstances, much less when they're starting drugs at 13 years old, right? Yeah. I think the sad part is, like you said, is glamorizing it, right? Like no no video I come across or Instagram reel is like negative. It's just like, I got huge on this or I benched six plates at 15 on this. I've never seen someone be like, I've ruined my endocrine system on this or I've got acne scars like crazy because I took this. Like no one talks about that kind of stuff right and you know then it just makes it seem like this mythical perfect concoction that you just get jacked and there's no other problems the ones that we were seeing and it's actually the tip of the iceberg what was happening with bodybuilders right so we're seeing suicide happen right suicide is a very real thing you go to a dark place and you're on a bunch of drugs that are changing your mind it doesn't matter what drugs like we see suicide all the time with these celebrities too so it changes that. Then you also have people that have died from blood clots. You have people that have died from heart attacks. And the ones that have survived the heart attacks 
all of a sudden now they're being hypocrites because they're like, oh, steroids are bad, right? It's like, look, just because you had a heart attack and you're like, it's a rare chance you're going to get a heart attack. Like now you're saying steroids are bad, but you were saying that you're natural actually before. It's like, like not, that's hypocritical. So why don't you just talk about the fact that, yeah, like my labs look like shit. I have a high risk of a heart attack. And by the way, I'm actually coming off of these drugs and be honest about it. So people actually listen to your story and the health changes that you're going through. I was very honest about like my gastrointestinal system literally freaking got destroyed from bodybuilding from the amount of food I was eating. Well, it turns out that I have an autoimmune disease. So that's why I had to eat so much food, but it destroyed my gut long-term. And I'm actually dealing with some health stuff. Now I was lucky because my labs are always basically bulletproof, but I've had genetic testing done. I'm now having carotid artery tests done. Instead of this, everyone gets a calcium score test when they're younger, which is good. It tests for plaque buildup around the heart. Um, however, it's rare that you're young and have calcium score tests that's going to come back above a zero. But like carotid arteries, maybe you're building up plaque or clots and you, one of those bad boys breaks off and you can die. So getting testing and adding awareness to it, I think is very important for sure. And that's, unfortunately you get the extremes that like Cali muscle massive right and now i didn't even recognize him when he popped up on my feed recently yeah he's and, but, so small now, eh? but he was talking about being natural for the whole time and then he suffers like a heart attack and then like he's talking oh steroids are terrible for you it's like dude <laughs> we're eating that much ramen and sodium probably wasn't a good move either but yeah. i can't take that guy seriously and, and, but that's what the mainstream sees though right so it's like, how can you take him seriously? Or how can you take what he says after the fact seriously? Because you might want to spread a positive message around like, look, like I just suffered a heart attack. I was taking steroids for 15, 20 years, but you're claiming to be a natural the whole time. So who knows what to believe anymore? Yeah. 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 It's a, it's a hard part of the sport, right? Like it's, it's unavoidable. Like a, anybody that would look at bodybuilding, they're going to go, oh yeah, there's, there's steroids involved, but it's just, you know, when I think about, you said you're 32. Yeah, I'm 32 now. Yeah, so you're you're same age as us, right? So like when we were coming up, you know, you'd look at the magazines and you're like, yeah, like they're on some shit. But I I know that, right? And I think that's part of the problem now is like there's these young influencers and stuff like that, and they're not they're not big enough that the general population may look at them. You know what I mean? When I think of like if you compared Arnold to like peak Phil Heath. People would look at Arnold, like the gen pop would be like, oh yeah, Arnold's natural. Yeah. And I think that that's part of the problem now is that you have these influencers with like two, three, five million followers that are all like 12 to 15 years old. And they're like, oh, I want to look like, I don't know, like that Anton that turned pro at 19, right? Yep. There's all these young athletes that probably look at him and this is not to talk downly at him at all, but like, they're going to look at him and be like, oh, like maybe I could do that too. And 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 they think maybe he's natural and then all of a sudden they find out he's not and then they're discouraged whereas like i was never discouraged knowing kai green was on stuff because it was just so obvious he was i like that you brought that up because i actually when i was at usa's i talked to a group of uh i don't want to call them kids because they're but they were they were like 19 to 20 years old 20 years old was the oldest one in the group and there's about four of them five of them and uh, one of them said i want to i want to be the next antoine he's 19 years old I'm telling you right now, this kid has better genetics than Anton, and Anton has amazing genetics. But I, I pulled him aside. I'm like, you understand what he did to get there in that period of time? It, it like he snapshot in time, like six to seven years of progress, which obviously he has good pro, uh, good genetics, or else you can't do that. End of story. Like amazing work ethic. Yeah. And you can't get peeled like that either without amazing work ethic. And um, but what he did from there to there was most likely this, and. Is that worth it to you at this point in your life or not? And the issue with it is, is it's not just today. It's what happens two, three, four years down the road. Can you actually have a career that lasts until 30 years old? Can you have a career that can, the best bodybuilders of all time are all in their early 40s, pretty much. If you look at the historical run of open bodybuilding and they never peaked because they weren't pushing so many androgens. Like that was the thing. And then if you look back at the golden era, like people are like, oh yeah, the drugs were just different. No, they weren't. In fact, they could have been potentially worse back then because like there, we have so much more technology now to make things better. Well, as long as you're getting, like if you're getting scripted technically, but 
the amount that they were using was laughable. Like people would think that they were lying that they got that big on that low of dosings, but no professional athlete in any other sport takes this many steroids besides in bodybuilding. There's probably a good reason. And they have the best doctors in the world enhancing these athletes and they're taking so much less. Now, every sport's slightly different. There's different formulas. There's different dosings to get the results. And the young kids that are just saying, I want to be the next Antoine, that's dangerous. And only because he's 19 years old and a 16-year-old or a 14-year-old is looking at this and say, hey, he was on trend to get there. Yeah. Boom. And then it's like, I don't think you realize you're 14 years old. I hit my second round of puberty when I was 19 years old. In fact, I've seen a 19-year-old's lab work. He went into a clinic. I was like, hey, go to this clinic and run some lab work, right? Before you even talk about enhancing further, right? And um, it was around potentially taking growth hormone. This is a promoter cross, by the way. Um, it's potentially taking growth hormone. I was like, guys, just get, get things wrong. Let's see where things are at. He came back with an 800, almost 800 IGF-1 score. And I go, I want you to know I can't inject that much into my body if I wanted to. I literally can't produce that much. Even if I inject IGF-1, I can't get there. And I was like, you're not taking anything. I was like, why? You're going through puberty right now. And you're 19 years old. This is a 19 year old. It's a very real thing. I hit a second round of puberty when I was 19 years old. There's a 0% chance I would have went from 135 pound soccer player from 18 years old up until 21 years old, 22 years old, and I was 220 pounds. 0% chance of also if I was going through puberty. And like, I was literally sleeping almost 10 hours a day. I was literally sleeping like six to eight hours a day. And then I was napping for another like hour to two hours a day. And all that I was doing was eating, going to school and lifting and then working. And that's literally all that I was doing, but I had to sleep a ton. And it's probably because of the amount of growth that I was producing. So why, why blow your load early on if you're just going to only get better into your mid thirties and late thirties and hopefully even early forties. Yeah. So during puberty, you're not natty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Facts. Um, and that, that's the thing with, with natural bodybuilding, right? It's even extended further. Guys in their 40s and 50s that, you know, by the time they get that two, three decades of training under their belt, it's like, damn, like y'all are winning world titles and winning pro shows. But the 14-year-old doesn't want to hear that, right? He wants to hear that he's pro at 19, not pro at 39. That's because social media has turned us into birds with our attention span. We've got less than three second attention span. I remember when Instagram was out and they did a study. It was either Facebook or Instagram. And then Instagram, can't, maybe Instagram was out by Facebook at that time. Facebook made it five second attention spans. And then I remember they came out with another study like two or three years later. And it was three second attention spans. And I was like, cool. We're about to turn into like pigeons instead of regular birds. It's like everyone wants something like now. And it's like, look, the most glorifying feeling ever is accomplishing something after a long ass time of working hard and taking one foot in front of the other and feeling like you're never going to reach there. And then you hit that goal and you're like, like, that's why guys cry on stage. Guys don't normally cry. It's pretty uncommon to see a guy cry, a grown man cry. That's also a GoPro at um, USA's actually. It's funny. No one else picked up on it, but I did. Uh, the dude is crying on stage. I saw him miss his pro card by one place. I think it was six to seven times, if not within two spots of getting a pro card. And like, I, I saw him crying in the bathroom one time, man. Like he just never felt like it was coming. And, you know, he just showed up. And I've seen guys that literally are, are like, they finally turn pro in their final stage. They're like, I'm shutting it down after this. Like, I can't do this anymore. Or they're growing out of their weight cap. And it's like, I don't want to do a bodybuilding kind of thing. And they're a classic. And like, they turn pro at that show. And like, I'm just like, no one deserved that pro card more than that guy right there that's on that stage. And that's awesome. See, that is gratifying. But if you're just gifted something, say, hey, here's a million dollars versus building a million dollars, it feels so much better. One, if I, someone gave me a million dollars and I was poor originally, I'm probably going to lose all that money anyways. I'm not really going to know what to do with it. You hand someone that's built a million dollars, give them another million dollars, and they'll figure out a way to keep making that grow. So the lessons and the journey that you learn along the way are really the beautiful part about life. Life is beautiful chaos. Life is hard. Anyone that says life is easy, I don't know what kind of life they're living, but um, but that's a fun part. The hard stuff allows us to learn lessons and allows us to learn. And then it also allows us to impact others' lives in a positive way. So, and that's a whole point to civilization and why we progress rather than regress is we continually give back to the next generation. Beauty, beauty. 
I think that's a good way to close this out, man. That's a good sound bite to, to wrap this up with. I think, uh, I think this is a really good chat, man. I think a lot of people are going to listen to this and kind of maybe turn their head a little bit about pay, potentially making some decisions and, you know, like we've chatted about, right? Potentially life altering decisions just because they want it now and they want it the quick way and what they think is going to be easy. And, you know, the three of us and, and a lot of people that have been in the sport for a long time, it's not that, it's not that way at all. Yeah, I, I love that the natural bodybuilding league is getting built up. I just want to see it continue to grow in a positive direction and not get a negative clout or connotation around it where enhanced athletes are competing on a natural stage because it's going to deter a lot of natural athletes or these natural athletes, what they're going to do is they're just going to enhance and they're going to jump over the, if you want to call it the dark side or not, uh, they're going to jump over the dark side and start competing in the enhanced league because they're just tired of it. Or these natural athletes are going to enhance and just stay in the natural leagues and compete. Yeah, yeah, well, for sure, man. Awesome, dude. Well, I appreciate you coming on. If uh, people want to find you, if they want to get in touch with you, ask questions, whatever, uh, where do they hit you up? Yeah, Instagram is probably the best, and it's at DynamiteD. Perfect. All right. All right, people. Well, if you guys enjoyed this episode with Dynamite D himself, let us know. If you guys want us to do this again, obviously, you know what to do. Let us know. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe for future episodes, and we'll see you guys in the next one.